Hello and welcome to this Friday's edition of Jamaica Magazine. As the carnage on the road continues, we put the focus on safety today. And what happens if your vehicle is seized by the police? Answers in the show. Stay with us. The news is next. Safety on our roads is our responsibility. Jamaicans, drivers, passengers, motorcyclists and pedestrians, slow down. Observe the rules of the road. Be courteous. Drive defensively. Be considerate. Buckle up. Wear a helmet. The careless overtaker is only rushing to the undertaker. Not observing the rules of the road could cost you your life and that of your loved ones. I encourage all road users to take special care as we use public thoroughfares. The life you save may be your own. Remember, your family wants you to arrive alive. Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your GIS News for Friday, May 26. Farmers affected by the recent heavy rains should start receiving government assistance next week. Minister Without Portfolio in the Agriculture Ministry, J.C. Hutchinson, made the announcement on Thursday as he toured Northern Clarendon farms that were damaged during the rains. He says the impact on the sector has been significant, pointing out that in one area alone, nearly 200 acres of farmland is still underwater and over 100 farmers lost crops and animals. It is one where throughout the island there is an estimate that has been done where the damage is roughly $522 million. And we, are, we have got so far $18 million to start, and I say start, um, to see if we can put back some of the farmers back on their feet. Apart from the monetary assistance, Minister Hutchinson says there are plans to put some of the most affected farmers on idle government lands. We have quite a number of areas that we have here marked already, and we are going to be putting farmers on there to get the cultivation going. Like uh, Irish potato, onion, sweet potato, scallion, all of these crops, the cash crops, we are looking to uh, get farmers on those lands so that we don't have to import anything at all. In the meantime, he is making an appeal to farmers to avoid farming in highly vulnerable areas such as along river banks. Jamaica is being acknowledged for improving the climate to foster successful public-private partnerships, PPPs. The country's PPP program now ranks fourth in Latin America and the Caribbean, moving up from eighth in 2014. The announcement comes from the Economist Intelligence Unit and the Inter-American Development Bank. It's contained in the results of the 2017 Infoscope, a survey that ranks 19 countries based on their capacity to mobilize private investment in infrastructure through public-private partnerships. The 2017 index covered assessments up to March 2017 in five categories, regulations, investment and business climate, institutions, financing, and maturity. It praised Jamaica's comprehensive legal framework for the identification, development, assessment, implementation, and management of PPPs, but it also acknowledged challenges such as the need to build the government's institutional capacity to develop and execute projects in a consistent manner and the lack of financing facilities to support PPPs. General Manager of Privatization and Public-Private Partnerships at the Development Bank of Jamaica, Denise Arana, says the improved ranking recognizes that the government is consistently improving its capacity to facilitate and execute PPPs. Cabinet has approved a $121 million contract for the development of roads in Barrett Town, St. James. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett says the project is expected to start early in June and should be completed in time for Christmas. Barrett Town, which is home to the first SOS Children's Village in the Caribbean, is considered a prime community tourism location in the parish. Speaking at a Labor Day event in the community, Minister Bartlett said the aim was to develop the area into a model community. The issues of 
tenure, land tenure, is the next big matter to be dealt with. And already efforts are being made with LAMP to deal with the titling situation in here. The Jamaica Constabulary Force is reporting an 11% decline in the number of children who went missing in 2016 when compared to 2015. The corresponding figure of 1,725 was revealed at an Ananda Alert National Missing Children's Forum on Thursday. Other data from the forum also revealed a total of 15,524 reports of missing children between 2009 and 2016, 78% of them being girls and 22% boys. 90% of the children reported missing for that period were returned home. To aid in the search and rescue operations, Minister of State with Responsibility for Youth, Floyd Green, says approximately 500 volunteers were trained last year. They also received instruction in first aid techniques. The Ananda Alert Secretariat, meanwhile, says it will be widening its data collecting approach to provide a more comprehensive profile of children who go missing and the main reasons they give. And finally, scores of high school students will receive training this summer to access entry-level positions in the business process outsourcing BPO sector. President of the Association of Principals and Vice Principals of Community Colleges, Reverend Dr. Gordon Cowens, made the announcement during a recent GIS think tank. He says in excess of three to 4,000 high school students will benefit. The training of the trainers is going on as we speak, but this will be during the summer and high schools through the high school system in, uh, managed by the Ministry of uh, Education will ensure that youngsters have an opportunity and know that this is a real live uh, opportunity for this summer. The program will run for about six weeks in each case and the, the students will be prepared then for entry level BPO opportunities. Reverend Cowan says the training is being planned on a regional basis with centers to be located in at least four of the community colleges across Jamaica along with other locations. Meanwhile, Executive Director of the Council of Community Colleges of Jamaica, CCCJ, Dr. Donna Powell Wilson, has announced that community college students are to participate in a software development competition tagged Pidget to win it. It will be held as part of the CCCJ's conference in June to celebrate its 15th anniversary. What is important also about this year's conference is that we will have more presentation from faculty within the community colleges. We will also have more presentation from students in the community colleges. So we're getting our students engaged. The conference will examine issues such as maintaining a student-friendly environment, diversity in the tertiary environment, and social media in the teaching and learning process. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. from the Island Traffic Authority and the National Road Maintenance Fund. Have you ever been stopped by the police and wondered if they had legal authority to seize your motor vehicle? Next, we tackle this sometimes contentious issue of motor vehicle seizure. And I'll tell you first about the, the reasons when the police should not seize the vehicles because they don't have the lawful authority to do so. If you don't have a driver's license in your possession, the police should not seize the vehicle. They can prosecute you under the Road Traffic Act. Now there's a difference between not having a driver's license and not having, a, and, and not having your driver's license in your possession. If a person was never issued with a driver's license, that person clearly should not be driving a motor vehicle. What the police will do in those circumstances is that for one, the person will be prosecuted. 
if they find out that the owner of the vehicle allowed the individual without a driver's license to use the vehicle, that person, the owner, can be prosecuted as well. Otherwise, the police will take possession of the motor vehicle because they will not allow a continuation of the offense. They will take possession of the motor vehicle and will get someone who has a driver's license or the owner to come and claim that vehicle. We don't seize a motor vehicle for no insurance coverage. The person will be prosecuted, but they will, it is not a seizable offense. No registration of fitness is not a seizable offense. The police can lawfully seize your vehicle if you don't, if the vehicle is not licensed. There is a provision in law that is referred to as the month of grace. So one month after your registration expire, if you are within that one month period, the police should not seize the vehicle. Your vehicle can be seized lawfully if you don't have a regis pl registration plate affixed. So you're driving around with, with no registration plate, it can be seized. Or if the registration plate is so obscure that you can't see what's on it, your vehicle can be seized under the Road Traffic Act. There are other acts that the police can lawfully seize your motor vehicle for instance, if you are operating in uh, contravention with the provisions of your license that was issued to you, you, you can, your vehicle can be seized under the Road Traffic Act as well. Also, under the Dangerous Drug Act, Section 24 of that act, allow the police to seize vehicle if the vehicle is suspected to be used in the commission of those offenses. Also, on, the, on, a, on a broader sense is that if the police have reason and evidence that your vehicle was involved in a criminal activity, then the vehicle can be seized and the owners can be held accountable even if they were not the ones that were driving the vehicle at the time. So those are the circumstances when your vehicle can be lawfully seized by the police. There are other provisions when you can have your vehicle towed if you park in areas that are designated no parking, if you park your motor vehicles that are too close to fire hydrants, then the, your vehicles can be towed. And in instances where your vehicles are seized, the vehicle should not be returned to you until the provisions of the law is satisfied. So if your vehicle was seized for not, for, 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 for not been registered or licensed, it will not be returned to you until you go and get your vehicle licensed and you pay the appropriate and prescribed fines, then your vehicle will be released to you. So it's important for persons to know when your vehicle can be lawfully seized as opposed to when it cannot be lawfully seized. If you don't wear your seatbelt, this could happen to you. And the consequences could be disastrous. In an accident, the vehicle stops. Suddenly, you don't. Even at 30 miles per hour, your body will be thrown violently forward with a crash force of up to 10 times your weight. Always wear a seatbelt. Seatbelts save lives. At least 132 people have died on the nation's roads since January. One sure way of leaving and arriving safely is to ensure you have proper tires. Watch this next feature for how to choose and care for your tires. Whether bicycle, bike, car, truck, tractor, trailer, or even an airplane, one thing is common. The sole contact established with the road surface is through the tires. And the condition of that one entity could mean the difference between a smooth ride and... Never buy a defective tire. Always check the tire to see that if you see any bumps, any scratches, any scrapes, anything that would look as if the tire has been compromised. Also, ensure that you follow the labeling guidelines. If the tread is worn, past the level of the indicator, you should change your tires. It is now time to buy a new tire. 
Also, you need to check on the manufacture date to see that when the tire was manufactured, so you know that you stay within a six year period of when you would purchase your tires. Uh, never purchase tires that are not for your vehicle. So you wouldn't purchase a tire that is too big for your vehicle or too small for a vehicle. Persons can get the correct tire size and air pressure information from their motor vehicle manual or the driver door lock-in panel located at the base of the opening of the driver door. Ensure that your car is properly aligned and that your tires are balanced so that you will allow for even wear and proper steering. You balance the tire so that the tire runs smooth. Without, without, without balancing the tire, it tends to vibrate at, at different speed and the tire doesn't roll over smoothly. Alignment is very critical because you want your tire to track, right? Some of you find a tire pulling to one side, your vehicle pulling to one side because of lack of alignment. You can find a tire riding up because your front end parts, especially your shocks, are maybe not in order. So it is critical to align the vehicle so you get maximum wear out of your tire. While it is critical to ensure that tires are in good condition before and during use, persons should also avoid activities that compromise the safety of their tires. Things such as overloading of vehicles, mixing tires, fitting wheels with improper rims, and not ensuring the correct amount of air is pumped into a tire all impact on its durability. In underinflation, you will have the outer areas being in contact with the road and not the tread that's in the middle. Now this is not the proper grip or footprint that you would want to have on the road. So you will have excessive wears on the outer section of the treaded area. Now in over inflation mode, what would happen is that only the center portion of your tire would be made in contact with the road. So the outer portions here, you will not have in contact with the road. And again, this will decrease the footprint, the amount of footprint that you want your, your tire to have with the road to give you a safe and proper use. And likewise, in the center, we'll have excessive wear. Now what you want is for proper inflation that you have a correct grip on the road with the treaded portion making contact with the road. Right here, between the groove of the tread, is what we call a tread wear indicator. Once here gets down to here, it's time to replace the tire. Yes, that's right. But for those driving commercial vehicles, there is sometimes an option, retreading. Retreading is advisable to be used only for commercial purpose, not for passenger purpose. We get a used use tire, and what we do, we do what we call an initial inspection. We inspect the tire for flaws, and if we see where the tire is suitable for retreading, we do a process known as buffing, we remove the outer tread of the tire, then it goes to another processing known as cementing. If there is need to repair, we do repairing. Then we do what is called stitching, we apply a layer of pre-cured rubber onto that casing. It goes into a cylindrical chamber for five hours at 110 degrees. At the end of the five hours, we take it out of the chamber. It um, cools for about one hour and it is ready for the road. With proper care, retreaded tires can last as long as new ones. There is also an ongoing discussion about a policy on used tires. In the meantime, persons are urged to be extremely vigilant if they choose to make such purchases. The amount of wear on a tire can also be determined by the use of a millimeter ruler. For example, an unused tire usually has approximately 8 millimeters between the height of the treading and the tread wear indicator. Tire safety is a critical issue. So, to complement personal vigilance, there are public bodies to ensure tire care and safety is not taken for granted. What we do here at the Bureau of Standards, we look at the labeling of the tire as well as general requirements for tread depth. Now, in regards to the labeling, information such as the tire designation number, which you would normally see like 60 slash 175 R15, that's the tire designation number, which highlights the tire size. Now, we also check for the inflation pressure, maximum load rating, control for ridging, 
the brand name or manufacturer's name that's on the tire. We have two compulsory standards for tires. That is the JS244, which is the standard for pneumatic tires for vehicles for passenger cars. And you have JS269, which gives the requirements for pneumatic tires for vehicles other than passenger cars. Motorists have to come to grips with the fact that they have a responsibility to ensure the fitness of their vehicles, to ensure the mechanical soundness of their vehicles um, that are used to ply the roadways. And, and this is entrenched in law. And that's what the Island Traffic Authority in the Ministry of Transport and Works hopes to build on through its Operation Fit Vehicle program instituted in January 2009. In partnership with the police and personnel from the Inland Revenue Department, island-wide spot checks of vehicles are carried out at least twice weekly in every parish. The main aim? To catch those who continue to pay little or no regard to keeping their vehicle in roadworthy condition. What emerges? as areas of defects are defective steering, defective brake, defective exhaust system, defective tires. Those four in particular seem to be um, very prominent. Get this, in 2010 alone, over 37,000 vehicles were inspected. Over 10,000 were found to be defective. That's almost one third. A certificate of defects, E1, is issued upon violation. Its counterpart, E2, a certificate of defects remedied, is issued upon correction of breaches and subsequent to a second vehicle inspection. Sanctions include a fine of $8,000 for any defect and the removal of license plates for serious offenses. With all the emphasis on vigilance and the efforts at enforcement by the various bodies in this and other areas of road safety, stakeholders are hoping they can keep road fatalities at a minimum. Persons should ensure that um, they follow the labeling guidelines, that is where load is concerned, where inflation pressure is concerned. Also, persons need to ensure that they check their tread depth so that when the tires are worn, to the, where the indicator is that they change their tires. Also, persons should ensure that they don't mix and match tires. Ensure that the tire that you're replacing is the one similar to the one that comes on the vehicle. Ensure that when the tires are fitted, the correct air pressure is in the tire. And by extension, also check your alignment which is the mechanics of the front end of the vehicle and also the back end of the vehicle to ensure that they are in good order. And by that, you will extend the life of your tire. It's important to store water during periods of drought. It's even more important to ensure that the water is safe. Boiling and treating your water with bleach are two of the best ways to purify water. If you choose the boiling method, allow the water to boil for five minutes, cover and let it cool. Store boiled water in a clean airtight container and use something with a handle to take out the water when needed. If you use bleach to make your water safe for drinking, use two drops of bleach to a liter of water, eight drops for a gallon and half teaspoon of bleach for five gallons of water. Shake well and leave for half an hour before use. Water is essential to a healthy life, so ensure yours is clean and safe for consumption. It is said that about 4 million Jamaicans are living outside the country. These Jamaicans can be found in every corner of the globe, making their presence known. Every two years, many of them return home to engage on issues of their own development and that of their birth country. 2017 is no different as this year's Jamaica Diaspora Conference is set for July 23 to 26 at the Jamaica Conference Center in Kingston under the theme Partnering for Growth.
The event brings together diaspora business interests, philanthropic groups, and young people living overseas and in the island. The program has been fully redesigned to breathe new life into the format of the conference and the planned exchanges with participants. If you want to attend, click onto the website of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade to register. Remember, a collaborative approach among citizens will help to create a Jamaica that is the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and to do business. People, me don't know about you, but me tired of with sons and daughters them are go missing. It is up to all of us to make sure that the youths them make it home, make it through life. Play your part. Sign up to get alerts when a child goes missing. If you have a Digicel phone, text the word HELP, H-E-L-P, to 444-2432. And if you have a Lime phone, do the same at 444-4230. Protect the youths. Alert the authorities. This is where the magazine closes for today, but there's lots more to see on our webpage, jis.gov.jm. There you may find relevant information on government projects and policies. For more television features, visit our YouTube channel. We're also on other social media sites, or you may download our app from the Google Play Store to stay informed while you're on the go. Have yourselves a wonderful evening. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.